Beloveds, welcome to Kingdom Life Ministries International again. Dr. T.S. Mligwe here, saying welcome to this wonderful session where we study the word. Last Sunday we were looking at how Christians fall, how leaders of Christians fall, how anybody and whoever falls from the grace of God. It was, it's, it's pathetic, it's, it's, it's terrible, but there are ways of falling. But today I want to give the opposite of that, sharing with you on how not to fall, how to keep standing. How to keep standing. Even if there are temptations, there is a devil and demons and all that and people who don't believe in God that we live with, work with, etc. But how do you survive? How can you survive not to fall when there is a tempter? Remember last Sunday, Paul was saying to the church, I, 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 I'm just crying, I, I'm just wondering in my heart, if you guys, if the tempter has not tempted you and, and got you out of the way, so that our, our ministry, they would have been useless. So there is a tempter. But uh, how do I stand, even if tempted, like Jesus? There are five things I want to share with you quickly. Number one, Psalm 119, verse 11. David says, thy word... Have I hid in my heart? Why? So that I might not sin against you. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the first secret on how to keep standing in this horrible world where there's a devil and demon spirits and so on and all kinds of immorality and all that. If I don't want to be part of it, what do I do? Number one, the Bible says hide the word of God in your heart. Take the word of God from the Bible pages and put it in your heart. Fill your heart with the word. Let your heart be filled with the word. Let your mind be filled with the word, the word, the word of God. You see, when the word is, has filled your heart, the world will not have accommodation in your heart. But if your heart is empty, the world will fill it. There is no room in the world which doesn't have one of the two, light or darkness. Every room, every room, everywhere in the world, there's either light or darkness. So, if my heart is empty, it will be filled with the world. But if my heart is filled with the word of God, then the world has no accommodation in me. Now, why the word? Jesus says in, in John chapter 15 verse 3, he says, You have been purged by the word that I taught you. So, the word of God, ladies and gentlemen, it purges my life. It cleanses my life. The word of God, if I allow it, it will clean my heart from the worldly things that I came to Jesus with. Isn't it Jesus said, come unto me? As you are. As you are, come to Jesus. But when you get to Jesus, he will work in you to cleanse your heart. Clean what? The worldly lifestyles. Things that you used to do, the things that I used to do when I was still in the world. When I come to Jesus, it doesn't leave me like that. He cleanses me from those things. How does he do it? By the word. So in other words, if, I, if, I, if I, let's say in the world, I used to, be, to lie a lot and live a lying life. So when I come to Jesus, the Bible says, thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not lie. So I, I take, thou shalt not lie, put it in the place of thou shalt lie to get out of trouble or to get out of situations or to get to look like I'm wonderful, I'm an angel, when I'm a devil in, actually. I live by lying. But now when I come to Jesus, the word of God will tell me now, I, sh I shouldn't lie because the Bible said those who lie are children of the devil who is the liar. You see that? So I re the, 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 the world things can only be replaced by the word. So, because you can travel around carrying your Bible everywhere. I mean, you can go to the shopping mall with your Bible. You can go to, to get into the text with your Bible in your hand and, and be at work and you're working with one hand. The other hand is holding the Bible. It doesn't work that way. So what you do, you take this word of God out of this papers. These papers which are pages. And you, you, you take that word, you put it in your heart. Now you can go anywhere with the word. When the devil comes like Jesus, you say, it's written that I, as a Christian, shouldn't do that. The devil says, I'm bad, but you say, no, listen, even with a lot of your bats, I'm not going to do that because I'm a Christian, I'm a child of God. The word of God says. 
Yeah, and the devil knows the Bible too. He says, but the word of God also says, you say, exactly. But the Bible says also, and then you tell him the opposite. That will keep you standing, child of God. It's not, it's not your pastor that can keep you straight. It's not church attendance that can keep you straight. It is the word, man. Because the word will go with you into your bedroom. It will go with you into your office. It will go with you anywhere if it is in your heart. And it will be purging and cleansing your life and directing your steps. Number two. What else? Okay, beside the word of God, what is it that uh, I, I must also do besides uh, keeping the word in my heart? Let's go to Proverbs chapter 4. Let's read together verse 23. The Bible says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life or lifestyles. Keep your heart with all diligence. Let your heart be kept seriously. Protect it, men. Protect your heart with all seriousness. Because your lifestyle comes out of that. Listen to the, to, to the NLT. It says, guard your heart above all else. For it determines, it determines the cause of your life. Ladies and gentlemen. So David says, I fill my heart with the word. Okay. So when Satan comes, he says, what about this? You know, like I showed you last, last Sunday. What about this? If you do this, you will benefit this, you will get this, you will enjoy this, it will be, and all that. So I say, no, 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 but it is written I shouldn't. So the Bible says, keep your heart, guard your heart. Your heart is your spirit. Your heart is the real you. Because the real you is not the body that we see. It is you, the spirit inside that body. So to protect my spirit, okay, I protect it by what? Not by church attendance, not by singing in the choir, not by playing musical instruments. Not by leading in song. Not even by simply praying alone. No, I need the word. I protect my heart by the word. I protect my heart by the word. How? So that when the devil comes, like Jesus, when he says something, say, I say, I don't do that because it's written. And I tell the devil what's written. Because I know it in my heart. So ignorance of the word of God, friends, can make you a simple victim of satan to cause you to fall and people would say you were not saved in the first place or you were not serious and yet you're serious and you were saved but you have no word in you the bible says the word of god is the sword of the spirit even so when i've got the word of god in my heart the holy ghost when 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 satan comes with his temptation the Holy Ghost will say but the word of God he raises the word of God like a sword and start to protect me are you hearing what I'm saying that's number two we protect our hearts by the word but I must have the word in my heart the Bible papers the Bible pages you know as they are cannot protect me when they remain here in the Bible the word of God which is here which is this can only help me when I take it out of these papers and put it in my heart and know the word like Jesus would say it is written and he quotes it's written and he quotes it's written and he quotes I must know the word if I don't know the word what what, what makes me think I know how to live so I, I live well because I know the word so I protect my heart by the word why the Bible said because my lifestyle my lifestyle, my lifestyle, my lifestyle is determined by what has filled my heart. So you see, when we come from the world, we come with worldly lifestyles. We all come with worldly uh, influences. So when we come to Jesus, he has to, work to in our, he has to work in us to cleanse us from worldliness. And for me to live a holy life, I need the word that, that cleanses the world out of me. And introduce me into holiness. And I live a holy life. Holy life means a life only set apart for God only. So I live that life. Because I'm led by the spirit of God. And I live the word of God. Why? It determines how to live. How I speak. How I dress. How I act. How I react. How I live with everybody. How I live with my enemies. How I live. How I live. How I succeed. It all is in the word. And when I know the word, it protects my heart. How does that happen? Because in my soul, 
There is the will. There is the emotions. They are thoughts. Now, the will is my determining factor of my lifestyle. So when my will is filled with the devil, or I mean worldly things on the devil, then they drop down into my spirit, into my spirit or my heart and fill my heart. And you find me simply reflecting what's in my heart. Jesus said, whatever is filled your heart will come out and we shall see you living it. We shall see you living that. You can hide it. It will come out. So I protect my heart by knowing the word, not only knowing the word, let's go and look at um, Colossians. Here is another thing that will help me. Because ladies and gentlemen, Satan has been in the world a long time. He already knows styles and methods of how to bring Christians down and how to create problems for them. Colossians chapter 1, verse 1 and 2. The Bible says, since you have been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Number two, I mean verse two, think about the things of heaven, not the things of the earth. Let's look at it from the King James Version. The King James Version says, if you then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sits on the right hand of God. Set your affection, set your focus on things above, not on things on the earth. So friends, number one, the Bible says, when I want to keep standing, I must seek. I must seek. I must seek. I must, I must hunt. I must, I must do everything focusing my doings on the things above. In other words, listen to this. I focus my life every day when I get out of my blankets. I focus on the things of God. What, how do I do it? The Bible says I think. I, I put my affection or my, my attachment, my, 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 my aspirations on the things of God. In other words, I, 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 I don't act like I'm not a Christian sometime and then I act like a Christian sometime. No, with me, who, are, who don't want to fall, I keep on putting my affection, my thinking, my perceptions, my focus on the things above. Because I'm a child of God. I don't even know when I will die. I don't know where I will die. I don't know how I will die. So I focus on the things of God so that whenever it happens, however it happens, whenever it happens, I must be ready. Friends, we won't die inside churches, all of us. So I must be ready all the time. Anytime, if God calls me out of my body or he allows anything to happen that will cause me to die, I must be ready to go into heaven. That's why I must focus. That's why I must set, I must set my affection, my focus on the things above. And I seek. I, I, I focus and, and I look up, up and look for those things only. That will keep me right. And I will, the devil will come tempt me and everything, I'll, my mind will be on the things of God, not on the things on earth. So the devil will have no way to put me down because I can only be put down if my, my affections and my, my heart are on the things of this world. Then I know I'm in trouble. Number five, which is the last thing, ladies and gentlemen, the last but one, rather number four, that's number four, number four, number four, not number five, number four. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 17, the Bible says, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. <sighs> pray without ceasing. Now, there must be a reason why. There must be a reason why praying is very important. There must be a reason why I must pray without ceasing. Jesus says, pray always. Now, friends, listen carefully. Prayer is another aspect that can help me to keep standing, no matter how, what temptations come my way. Listen, my mind is on the things of God. All the time, every time, every way. Now, I, I am also prayerful. I'm always praying for me, praying for myself, Praying for all the things that concerns me. But this prayer, because when I pray, my mind and my heart should be on God. 
the, the, my mind and my heart should be in God. In other words, prayer, ladies and gentlemen, takes me and puts me into the presence of the Lord. Now, when I am in the presence of Lord, the Lord and I'm praying, either I'm thanking him, uh, I'm praising him, I'm worshiping him, and, uh, and I'm thanking him, and, and I'm, I'm asking for whatever I need, and all that. Those things make my mind and my heart to be in God. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So when I'm praying, it's not, I'm not, I don't just, just bubble words out of my mouth. No, I, 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 I release the things which are in my heart. There may be thanksgivings, there may be praises, there may be worship, there may be all kinds of things. So when I, I keep on praying like that, it makes me focus on God. When I focus on God, when the devil comes with worldly things, I cannot accept them even in the presence of God. Man, I don't know if you're hearing this. When Eve was tempted, she was found alone. Now, that's what the devil does. When you're alone, you become a victim of a temptation. And there, are, there must be times when you're alone, obviously. But you see, those are the times when Satan will come with all kinds of issues. So, but if I'm filled with the word, I'm not only filled with the word, I meditate on the things of God. I don't only meditate, I am, I'm prayerful. You know, I'm praying, Jesus said, pray, uh, pray always. And Paul says, pray without ceasing. And I'm prayerful, which means I stay in the presence of the Lord. When Satan comes with the things, they will not, uh, they will not get me fall, man. I will not fall. If I, I've got all these other things, and I'm also prayerful, it, it's, it's very difficult to fall when you are in the presence of God. Because the presence of God will also influence your decisions and your choices. So friends, there is a way that can help you stand and never fall. That is number four. Now the number five, which is the last thing that I want us to look at which can help you stand no matter what the devil does, no matter how much the devil uh, tempts you and all that, you can still be standing after he has done everything. Here is the last thing. Matthew chapter 7 verse 24, the Bible said, Therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine, hear the word of God, and doeth, and doeth, and doeth them, them what? Them the word of God. I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon the rock. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and, the, and beat upon the house, and it fell not, for it was founded on the rock. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine, and does not do them, does not do do them shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand, and the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon the house, and it fell, and great was the fall. So, there, there, there are two perceptions here of how I can stand without falling. Let me read you from the New Living Translation. It said, Anyone who listens to my teachings and follows it is wise, like a person who builds a house on the rock. And then the verse 26, but anyone who hears my teachings and doesn't obey and doesn't obey. Now watch this. The matter of practicing the word which is in my heart is a personal decision. The matter of no, of disobeying the word that is in my heart is another decision. So it's, it's not a gift that where you would say, well, I don't have the gift of obedience. I don't have the gift of doing the word. There's no, it's not a gift. It's a decision you must make that when God speaks, he's not my friend, he's not my colleague, he's not my, my buddy, he, he's my father, he's my source. So when he speaks, I cannot take what he says for granted. So you, you do the word. When you do the word, you cannot do the temptation at the same time. When you live the word of God, you, live, you do what God says. It's difficult when Satan comes with the things that should, be, that should oppose that. That's why you couldn't get Jesus because Jesus said, it's written. It's written. And he only does what's written. And it saved him from falling even if he, was, he had flesh and blood in the world. So ladies and gentlemen, you and I will have no excuse before God. The Bible, remember, says when we die, there's still a time of giving account of what you did with your life. What you did with your life. 
what you did with your life, you are still going to give an account. I'm going to give an account of what I did with my life, what I did in my calling, if I was preaching the gospel or I was preaching nonsense in order to attract, uh, you know, crowds and things like that. So the Bible teaches me that I'm going to give account. And by then I won't be anybody's pastor, anybody's father, anybody's husband, anybody's whatever. No, I will just be me. Because I didn't come in the world as a father. I didn't come in the world as a pastor. I came alone with nothing. So watch this. These five things can protect you. So you and I have no excuse. Keep the word in the heart. Obey the word that is in your heart. Protect your heart with the word. Be prayerful, man, and do what the word of God says. Then when Satan comes, there's no way he can bring you down. I'm sure you've learned something today. God bless you. Let's pray together. Daddy, thank you for teaching us the ways to keep standing no matter how we are tempted, when we are tempted, and all that. Help us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that dead will keep standing and never put you to shame. When we fall and why, why in the mud, in the mud of sin and all those kind of things, in the name of Jesus. Daddy, I am praying right now that God... Help us, O oh God, to walk in the word by your Holy Spirit so that we don't fall away. And it is your desire that we shouldn't fall away in Jesus' name. If you are listening and you have been listening and watching this telecast and you know you are not saved, you are not a child of God, if you die now, you don't know, you know you will go to hell. But you say, Pastor, I don't want to do that. What must I do? Accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You say, how? You just follow me and imitate the words I'm going to lead you with. And you just say those words. Believe that in your heart. You will be saved, forgiven. Then you can practice these five things and they will help you to stand. Say, dear Lord Jesus, I heard your word today. And it showed me that I'm a sinner. I receive you, Lord Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. Forgive me all my sins. Thank you, Lord. I believe I'm saved now because I received you as my Savior by my faith in God. In Jesus' name, amen. If you pray that prayer, ladies and gentlemen, out there, get to a good Bible teaching word, um, church, a church that preaches the word of God. Get in there to be loved there, to be taken care of there. To be protected there and ultimately to be rebuked if you do something wrong so that you come in line again god bless you i hope to see you next sunday as we continue with other teachings that help you and help me in this world god bless you